Right, because people came after me when I opposed idiot Trudeau's idiot legislation. Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. My name's David. In today's top stories, we've got some uh, clips here from the woke media. We got Danielle Smith. We've got Justin Trudeau with another scandal. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's jump into this. First off, we got this panel here from CTV. Uh, the question here is, did Trudeau make the right choice avoiding a carbon tax meeting? Trudeau is a coward. Yeah, Gary, and Trudeau has also issued a challenge to premiers saying that if they have a credible alternative, well, then they should present it. Would this have been an opportunity to call them out all in one room? I don't think so. And I agree with Saeed that there's no political upside for the prime minister doing this kind of a meeting, uh, you know, televised. The, the last time I remember something of this magnitude being televised, it was Paul Martin saying, health care is the fight of my life. And I'll stay here as long as needed to make sure that we get a deal on health care. This is 20 years ago. And day one was televised. Uh, day two, uh, after having been beaten up fairly badly by the premiers of Canada, um, you know, the conversation then went in camera at 24 Sussex Drive. So I, I don't see an upside. I think that Pierre Polyev has uh, made his point clear. And I think seven out of 10 premiers have made the point clear that they don't like it. The overwhelming majority of Canadians don't like the carbon tax. I'm not sure that anything of any value would have been uh, established by a meeting like this, but remember that it is the job of the leader of the loyal opposition uh, to oppose. It's not his job to say, this is what I would do at this point. Uh, there's plenty of time between now and an election uh, for Mr. Polyev to fully uh, show what his plan is going to be. Yeah, Steph, plenty of time, but is he running out of time with the public to sort of have some credibility on a credible plan for um, the environment, that is Mr. Polyev. What kind of woke garbage question is that? Really? Is he running out of time with the public? The public all wants Pierre Polyev as the leader. Let's just get real here. That's gonna be a question I think a lot of people are gonna be putting to Mr. Polyev um, in the coming weeks and months as we head into wildfire season in this country, because mm. I do believe that one of the realities around- The ones that are all started by people, arson, and not the environment. Sure, there's some lightning strikes and there's the, the odd uh, fire that is started by the climate, but majority of the ones popping up in Alberta and BC, et cetera, they're started by people. Maybe crack down on that. And having a meeting right now on the carbon tax, um, the Liberals have really struggled to articulate support for the carbon tax as an environmental policy, the risk of doing nothing. We are about to perhaps go through as a nation what it looks like when you don't do enough. And just yeah, this is woke Toronto star garbage. Just next up, we got Daniel Smith speaking with the uh, Canadian Taxpayers Federation here. Pretty honest about how Justin Trudeau has treated Alberta. The, the fact that if we um, were to get by formula what we're entitled to mm -hmm. uh, under legislation, that we'd be entitled to 53% of the benefit based on our overpayment of premiums and the compound interest, uh, people should be asking themselves: Is that fair? Is that fair that Alberta, with four and a half million people, continues to underwrite more, more all, every single federal program is structured this way, mm -hmm. where we pay more in and we get back less than we pay in. It's not sustainable, especially when you have a federal government that continues to attack us, continues mm -hmm. to talk about emissions caps on oil and gas, emissions cap on fertilizers, emissions cap on methane, uh, carbon taxes that are going up unsustainably, on uh, talking about uh, regulating uh, the number of combustion engine vehicles we're allowed to sell, regulating whether or not homes are allowed to be hooked up to natural gas. They just keep, the hits just keep on coming on our industry mm -hmm. and they keep on asking us to pay. Mm -hmm. So Alberta did a referendum on equalization. We said we want to renegotiate this relationship that we mm -hmm. have with the rest of the country and they shut the door in our face. So we had to look at well, what's another way to keep some of those dollars here. And the Alberta Pension Plan, we have the right under the Constitution to all have our own plan under statute. There's a formula there for how we would exit. And now it's going to be up to Albertans to decide. I, when, uh, when I was running in the leadership with, uh, tr with Travis Taves, he was very committed to this. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, I wonder what he knows that I don't know. Right. Well, now everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that if we got the $334 billion we're entitled to, 
that that would allow us to reduce our premiums on employees by $1,425 and employers by $1,425 for a total of $2,850. Mm -hmm. Or we'd be able to increase the benefits for our, our citizenry. And we'd also be able to create, as, as Jim Dinning, who's leading the panel for doing the review, has said, we might, we'd be able to create an ecosystem here that would be able to support a large amount of additional investment dollars coming into Alberta. So there's, there's a lot of great reasons why why we should why we should pursue it now why shouldn't yeah, we? why shouldn't we yeah i think the the emotional argument mm. would be that albertans love canada and albertans want to be a constructive part of canada and i think it, it saddens albertans to know that uh, we're not treated the way we should be mm. and i think albertans still aspirationally hope that we can create a better relationship with the rest of the country and be respected for what we have to offer albertans are so generous that uh, it, we've never, we've always wanted to just be left alone. Let us do well, and then everybody does well. Mm -hmm. And so I hope, uh, so I've got a parallel track um, that I think is responsible for people to know just how much they can benefit mm -hmm. if we go to a pension plan. But I'm, I'm really hoping that the rest of the country knows that you know, Albertans really um, are strong and proud Canadians. We just have a government that hasn't been treating us well. Yeah, there you heard it. That's uh, pretty straightforward there. So. The pension plan is really propped up heavily by Alberta. So if they pull out, that is going to be pretty detrimental. You got to get some number crunchers in there. Maybe wait until Polyev is in there. Like, because Polyev can do some, some uh, payments there to Alberta to get them caught up for all the deficits that Trudeau just, you know, keeps not paying Alberta. Then, you know, make it fair and then just keep everything together. I think that's probably would be best for Canada. I'm sure a bunch of people, especially in Alberta, is like, let's just, you know, break out of the, the system there and do our own thing. As for new constructions, not hooking up with gas. We've got this article here posted by Rebel News. Environment and Climate Change Canada said it would pay British Columbians upwards of $24,000 to switch their home heating system from oil, propane, or natural gas. Feds approve 100 million subsidies, phase out natural gas heaters in BC. Like, why? I can understand if they want to get rid of the uh, the, the oil heaters and the, the big oil tanks and all that. It's the dirtiest one of them all. That makes sense. But this war on natural gas is absolutely nuts. This place I live in here, there was a natural gas furnace put in maybe two years before I moved in. The furnace here is only 10 years old. And then I looked it up and natural gas furnace apparently lasts 15 to 20 years. So what is the more environmentally conscious thing? Would it be to rip out that natural gas furnace, which has only used up half of its life and put in heat pumps? We know Mark Carney's got this interest there in the heat pumps. He's on the board there. He wants to make those dollars. You got to wonder if they get everyone on heat pumps and then they can control everything through one source, the electricity, then they can completely get you right by the nads. If there's multiple sources of heating, there's not that kind of power over you. I don't know. I think that's just a, a bad way to go. It's better to have more sources and different redundancies. You got backup. You also got protection from the government being corrupt. Next, we got this one hot off the press. Arnold Viersen, a conservative, just dug this up. It's another another Trudeau scandal. So the Coles notes of it here, February 14th, 2022, Trudeau enacted the Emergencies Act. February 15th, the next day, <laughs> Trudeau receives legal advice from prosecutors. So let's take a closer look at this. Access to information records uncovered by Conservative MP Arnold Viersen show cabinet waited until after it invoked emergency powers against the Freedom Convoy to seek advice from Crown prosecutors. MPs for years have sought proof of cabinet's claim. It was told by lawyers beforehand that the action was unlawful. I filed an access to information request for the memorandum on the Emergencies Act sent to the Attorney General from the Public Prosecution Service, MP Viersen said in the statement. What do they advise the Attorney General? We will never know because Justin Trudeau censored it. The censored documents depict a two-page memorandum for the Attorney General. It was written by the Deputy Director of Prosecutions on February 15, 2022, one day after Cabinet had already invoked the emergency powers to quash the Freedom Convoy protest. Cabinet's actions was unlawful according to a January 23rd federal court ruling. It criminalized the attendance of every single person at the protest, regardless of their actions, wrote Justice Richard Mosley. Cabinet is currently appealing the judgment. So basically, Justin Trudeau did not receive legal counsel. He didn't go to the Crown prosecutors and say, hey, is, am I allowed to do this? He just did it. 
And then he asked the next day, hey, am I going to get sued here? So hats off here to Arnold Viersen for digging this up. Once again, the conservatives are on the job digging up Trudeau's corruption. This is ridiculous. It's just one day after the other, Trudeau corruption. On top of that, we got this article here, RCMP officers uncomfortable with political pressure, Emergencies Act during Freedom Convoy, internal report. Basically, a report came out and said a lot of RCMP officers didn't feel comfortable. They didn't know how to use their powers or if they should use the powers. Some respondents were deployed in national capital region also indicated they felt uncomfortable enforcing certain legislation because the police of jurisdiction did not appear to be taking enforcement action. Although the Liberal government maintained that the police were independent at the arm's length of the government officials, officers responded to the protest that the need to provide hourly intelligence updates from ministers and the government politicization of policing harmed their efforts. Interviewees also indicated that their issues of information and intelligence that was disseminated to external Government of Canada agencies. Specifically, some of the Government of Canada partners would misrepresent the information or misattribute third-party information as RCMP information. The pressures from the government and the public to resolve the blockades were high during the convoy. Interviewees and survey respondents felt that the Police response to the convoy events were highly politicized. This was particularly the case with respect to the convoy events in the national capital region, where various elected officials and senior government of Canada officials were of the view that it was the RCMP's responsibility to resolve the blockades in Ottawa. Basically, Trudeau wanted to hand off the all of the blame to the RCMP. This is just a big cluster. If you want to check out this True North article, I'll link it up down below. Next up, we got Jonathan Wilkinson here. This is <laughs> federal government announces new tree planting initiative. So there's two things funny about this. First one, I'll just let it play. Amount of work to support tree planting communities across Canada and the new growing Canada's community canopies initiative will further enable. We can cook anywhere. And indigenous peoples in advancing the two billion trees goal. It's it's almost you can't even understand the whole thing. You really have to listen to it to even pick out what's being said. This looks like it was shot on a potato. What is going on here, guys? But regardless of that, what it basically says here is they're planning to plant two billion trees by 2031. When have we heard that uh, promise before? They're not planting nothing. Let's get real here. Not only that, two billion trees, not not just work on a hundred million. No, no, let's go with two billion. Just like those four million houses that they're supposed to be building by 2031, right? This is just more Trudeau liberal lies. Next up, we got this hilarious clip here from Jordan Peterson. I was posted by Cat Canada. Right, because people came after me when I opposed idiot Trudeau's idiot legislation. You have to use pronouns. It's like you buddy <laughs> seriously you try to get control of my tongue and see mm -hmm. what the hell happens so i knew what that meant anyways you know i got pilloried for that for my meanness even <laughs> though i could see what happened i told that bloody senate in canada in 2016 that they were going to produce a psychological epidemic among young women i knew that i thought okay what are you doing you're confusing people about their sexual identity okay well who's most confused Oh, young women mm -hmm. who are sensitive to psychogenic epidemics. Oh, young women. Oh, I see. So we're going to confuse adult adolescent girls about their sex. How's that going to work? Oh, we'll have a psychological epidemic. Well, that's exactly what happened. And I could see that. I knew the literature. There's a literature on psychological epidemics going back 300 years, outlined in a book called the Discovery of the Unconscious, which is a bloody classic, a yeah. great book. Yeah, it's a great book. Mm -hmm. And so I told the Senate that. Anyways, people came after me for being mean. Can't you just, you know, call the poor victims what they want? It's like, not if they're going to force me. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, he's, he's getting pretty spicy in this interview. That's <laughs> Let's see what the people had to say. Great guy, admire him. Canadian legend. More Canadians like this are needed to prevent the colossal disaster in Canada and globally, which is already on our doorstep. For those who think it's no biggie, they'll be making the biggest mistake of their lives. Urgent. Yeah, that's that's right on the money. Next up, look at this ad that's being run on the Liberals uh, X account here. It's a <laughs> Alex Jones thing. Like, come on. This guy is not even Canadian. He's not running in any party. He's not. <laughs> this is so stupid. In this trial, his second for defamation. Yeah. I gotta play the audio on it, but this is just embarrassing. 
The liberals are running this stuff. Canadians are still waiting for you to denounce and disassociate with Klaus and the WEF. No one cares about Alex Jones. He's inconsequential comparatively. There you go. <laughs> so next up, we've got more Palestine protests. This has got a lot of students here as this uh, Karima lawyer has posted. It's a matter of public interest that hundreds of students walked out in the support of Palestine to protest at Oakville Town Hall. <laughs> These kids don't understand how life works. Chanting in Canadian streets does not fix anything. These kids at this age, they're a little rebellious and they're fiery and they think, ah, oh, we'll join this thing and it'll really do something. It won't. You're just making things worse in Canada. So next up, we got this clip here from Wall Street Silver. It says uh, this woman's little sister OD'd and is in the hospital due to the cost of living crisis in Canada. Young people are losing hope. Being somebody who is young, in their eyes, they don't see themselves going anywhere in life. Um, everything's so expensive. They're struggling because they can't pay their bills, um, their car payments, the insurance, a place to live. And I got the call last night that my sister had overdosed and is now in the hospital. And she's on a respirator. Now, how fucked up is this world? It's literally affecting our families. I wish if you're out there, Justin Trudeau, I wish you would step down before you create so much sadness in the world and hurt and pain for people losing their families, their brothers, their sisters. Their he doesn't care. That's the problem. He really doesn't care. Next up, something a little bit lighter here. We've got a condo for sale in Vaughn for $468,000. We're gonna mute that music and let's take a look at this condo. Apparently this is a hot listing. Okay, we come to the front foyer here. Uh, there's a closet. We've got a bathroom, a tub. We've got the bed in the living room, because that's fun. <laughs> oh, there's a desk there and, and a Juliet balcony. I've had one of those once. They're, uh, yeah, a whole lot of nothing. You can just stand out there. Tiny kitchen, a closet. This is pathetic. This is tiny. This is so small. Oh, there's laundry though. This is terrible, man. Like these, these places are so small for almost half a million dollars. Next up, we got a clip here from King Charles. So it says here, the first official painted portrait of King Charles III since his coronation has been unveiled at Buckingham Palace. I bet it is just a striking painting, right? Let's take a look. <laughs> huh? That is hideous. That is. <laughs> Red is a very powerful color. And in general, you don't use too much of it because it's just, it's too much to the eyes. Our eyes take that color in in a very uh, strong manner. Somebody uh, accidentally spilled a bucket of <laughs> red paint on this one. Let me know what you guys think about it down below. And jumping over to my group here, let's see what we got today. Look at me, I'm smarter than you. I don't believe in conspiracy theories. My government and media would never lie to me. Yeah. This is my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, yeah. Hey, Canada, how come there is no progress report showing us exactly how much the Trudeau government has reversed climate change since 2015? Because it's a big scam and they're stealing our money. India's foreign affairs minister thanks Trudeau for taking India's criminals off their hands. Yeah, they're in our streets right now, stealing cars. Here's Trudeau with, what was that, Bono from U2? And then there he is with uh, Klaus Schwab. So he penetrated the cabinet, we penetrated the cabinet. <laughs> public health rules and Canadians <laughs> stepped up in their communities. They stepped up for their frontline health workers. They stepped up for each other. Probably talking about the V word. We can't talk about that on the channel. 
Can't talk about that on this platform, period. Dalton Clark Stewart, 22, accused of lighting Canada's Barrington Lake fire, which burned for one month in 2023. Nova Scotia man charged over devastating wildfire. Trudeau claimed was caused by climate change. Trudeau uh, Castro comparison. The problem with this is there's people saying the timelines don't add up, but the main problem is, is Trudeau looks like Castro, but he also looks like Pierre. So he looks like both of them. If people really want to know, all you have to do is pretty simple. When you see him in a restaurant drinking out of a glass, just grab the glass after he leaves and send that into a lab and get it tested. I'm surprised someone hasn't done that yet. But I'm not saying to do that at all because I'm sure that's some sort of DNA fraud or whatever, something illegal. I'm not saying to do that, but I'm just saying I'm surprised no one has done that. I wish you had balls. I wish you had... <laughs> Well, that's where we're going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching the end of the video here. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the new scandal the conservatives have uncovered. Trudeau just invoking the Emergencies Act, not even checking with the Crown prosecutors, not even not even caring about it. Oh, let's just do this. We'll, we'll figure that out tomorrow. So let me know down below. Thanks for watching the end of the video here. Be sure to subscribe and turn on a bell. Ring the bell. Ring the bell for good luck. It's definitely good luck. If you want to check out some hiking content, I got that uh, there. And uh, more Trudeau Madness here. See you on the next one.